have to say it is absolutely a pleasure and such a rarity because this cast, the principles, it is so amazing that it is female driven. You know, it's it's not that the men are not important in this piece, but this piece is carried. <laughs> Alice Cooper, ladies and gentlemen. Um, <laughs> But it's so amazing because there are very few operas like this. And it has been, I mean, it's always such a joy. I love this piece. I've I've had the luxury of doing it a lot. But there has been something really amazing about the chemistry between the women in this cast. And the feeling in the rehearsal room, for me, it has been incredibly different, largely because of Sarah. But, I mean, I don't know if you all felt that. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. 100%. Sisterhood. It's sisterhood, you know, and this is the cool thing about this. I mean, it's a silly thing to say, of course, because there's a lot of sisters in the sisterhood, but there is something more to it. You know, what do you think it is that is not there or is there that isn't normally there that has made this? I've been thinking about it a lot. Made this, and I've tried not to draw sexist conclusions. Sorry, guys, (laughs) but what is it that's missing? that has made us feel that we've gone to places that we haven't normally been able to go to in the room. Because I feel like we've had a different sort of intimacy emotionally. I feel like, I don't think the sex card is not not there. I think we're all still sexual beings, whatever thing we play, and those relationships in the room Mm -hmm. are still have tensions of who we are as whole people. But what is it that's missing, that's, that's been different, that's been freer, that's been more emotional, more honest for me it's been more emotional more I don't know what it is it's really I mean honestly for me the the difference is a storyline that centers the female story Mm -hmm. rather than a a soprano that has to martyr herself in order to prove her innocence or Mm -hmm. a a mezzo who is the third wheel in a love triangle that's absolutely perpetuated by the man Mm -hmm. you know like it's this is a story where the outside influences, because it is a Carmelite, you know, convent, there are no outside influences. In fact, you're the only one. Blanche is the only one that has, you know, that duet with your brother. And, you know, it's it's fantastic. But really, the rest of the time, it's what do we want? Mm-hmm. What are our convictions? Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that, that that definitely turns the the opera rehearsal room narrative on its head a bit. Oh. I feel yes. like we're not, <laughs> exactly, we're not, we're not, and I hate to say this because it's, I'm not blaming men at all, it's sort of the social, financial, sociological, historical, you know, the pill hadn't happened, the pill only happened, six, God, I'm getting into it here, 60 years ago, and I'm not blaming men for the trajectory of how we have been biologically and how it's, it's taken us in society to where we are now and why all the operas are mostly to this point, and we can say to this point, we don't have to be sad about it, it's just been a reflection of where we've all been. Mm -hmm. But it's sort of very weird that most of the operas, when you're playing a role, even when I play male parts, I'm, well, not so much actually, that's freer, but I am always a character in relation to a man. Mm -hmm. Somehow I am part of his world, and I am attached to him in some way, and he gives me, or he tells the audience what my status is. But I felt when I was in a rehearsal with you guys, you were all, just you, yeah. the individual. The male gaze was was off. Yeah, yeah. The that's The male it. gaze was like, yeah, no male gaze. Yeah. yeah. Poulain, Bernanos, okay, that's our job, but now we have to tell the story. Yeah. And Mère Marie wrote it, and we all have to give our lives to give this story, to yeah. tell this story. I, I have to say also, and I'm pretty sure all of you guys agree with me, the fact that we have a woman yeah. leading us. Hello. I wanted to bring this up. Sarah. I absolutely this is, agree with you. This I mean, is key. From day one, yeah, truly, oh, from day one, it was, really different really different circle. Circle. Yeah. it was a different yeah. rehearsal. It was a different rehearsal process. It really was. You yeah. know, a different feeling entirely. So to have a woman shepherding this story is rather extraordinary, I think. Well, I am so grateful to you all, and I say this often because for me, I feel like this production is my honor and my privilege. This story is my privilege to be a part of the storytelling, to work with you all has been overwhelming. And if I've done anything right, I feel like what I what we did was to create the space for the conversations, to create the space for us each to go on this journey together and individually. And I was so excited to find what each of you brought into the room and how you each related individually to the story and then to build from that. That was our foundation, was you as human beings, because the opera is about 
these women who are so profoundly human. It's true, yeah. but you also allowed us to do something. That, I mean, we've all been working a little bit, <laughs> AARP. <laughs> um, but uh, <laughs> I have a card, none of the rest of you do, but you'll like it, there are discounts. Um, but the thing is, often when we have a revival, especially one that has been seen that is iconic as this one is, that's been seen as many times as it has at this house and is so much a part of the language of the Metropolitan Opera. This John Dexter production, we can all think of all of the ladies who have played our parts and try not to every single time we have to walk <laughs> on the stage. Yeah. But you allowed us to come in and find our way and allowed us to find who we are and what we bring to these characters. Do you all agree? Yeah, yes. Yes, 100%. Absolutely. And um, you think that that should always be the case. And again, no offence to everyone else I've ever worked with, but there's a completely... Oh, I hate to say it. <laughs> but it's true. I it's hate to say it. True. It's it's I hate to say it because I think... I'm just, I was in the bathroom cleaning my teeth and I'm going thinking, what is it, you know, about when it's just women? And I was going through, oh God, wars, you know. What is the difference between history or a room, whether it is men and women in it together, or just a history, which I can't imagine because there's never been one, where there's just women? And I just think of, I was thinking about women, you know, trying to live their lives, give birth, feed people, you know, clear up in Ukraine after the war, try to sort of build a kitchen again and try and work around the sort of... the activeness of the male response to everything in life and it was terribly simplistic thinking but I was thinking when I came into the room there wasn't that sort of hierarchy when you were there and you made clear it wasn't because you were just were in the room with us yeah. as a person and there was you were deliberately as open as us I don't know if it was deliberate but you were, were as open as us and it was sort of a strange equality it was it was not that I feel, a pr I don't know what if you feel the same in, in the rehearsal, if there's somebody that's supposed to be the leader and you have mm -hmm. to, it was a whole different feeling. Yeah. It was an actual conversation that included all of everyone's in input. A yeah. dialogue, very if you will. A and, dialogue. And usually, a dialogue. <laughs> and, and it's um, the luxury of, we were talking about this in the rehearsal process, to have even more time, I mean, this actually really requires painstaking time yes. to yes. devote and how we're going to say each line to one another mm -hmm. and where we are in position to the set which shows every single step on the grid where we are because of how minimal in a sense and modern it is and if as you said very beautifully in rehearsal if one of us is concentrating on something else we'll lose it you know um, that tension and I, I think um, another element I definitely wanted to say is it, uh, it's, this piece is so huge and so emotional, but to have a chance to be on stage with each of you, remarkable artists that are known for, oh, I mean, Wagner, Lachme, uh, Verdi, uh, I Saw Your Hands, I mean, the art song, concert work, and to be on this set, this story, this music, and everyone is, all of these roles are personal. They have the space that, that within to be all of all of who you are today, mm -hmm. not just what you've done in the repertoire before, or in terms of the storytelling that we've we've done. Like you're saying, um, that's been a huge difference in mm -hmm. a room for me. I've never had a, an ensemble piece like this. With, I, 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 this is just such a dream come true. I mean, I died. It's, it's from a you know. I'm just <laughs> I didn't move. That's I didn't want to move true. away from the voices that were like right at my side. I was like, hey. Do you know what's amazing about what you said? It's exactly that. But there are so many, we are all sort of specialists in some things, but this piece is an equalizer. And what's beautiful about it is that we all know what we do a lot of, but it is being next to someone who does something different, and that informs what we are doing yeah. for yeah. our next yeah. Yeah. And a line is delivered to us in a certain way, which makes us respond in a certain way. And again, I keep saying the stupid thing, but it's dialogues. But in fact, when someone says something to you, you have no choice but to respond in turn. So the color of your voice when I'm responding to you, I take, somehow I take that on. And if, I mean, God bless, there's no making me sound like you because your, <laughs> your innocence and, and silver and sparkle and amazing float and one day in my life that might happen. But it is incredible. And, you know, the colors, I, I'm so sorry I'm not on stage with you, but, you know, you've got to get out of here before I can come on. But uh, it is astounding being able to sort of share constantly. Um, 
there's there is actually something I, I kind of wanted to bring into the conversation because we're having too much fun. The piece really brings up things that are very deep in our psyche and the piece focuses on fear and death and how those two things relate to each other and death sometimes can mean change and the fear of change and how to embrace these things how do you all manage to get as close as you can to those emotions which are the crux of this piece without allowing it to affect your voice because it's something I fight every single time I mean, honestly, yeah. I literally witnessed you yeah. <laughs> start crying in the middle, and I was like, "How do you cry and sing?" Oh yeah, I know. I had to all our lives. I, you were like <laughs> Traviata. I got it. <laughs> every time. Every time. I've been. I mean, it's been crying since day one. Yeah, I know. Yeah. 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 But like, I mean, I just tipped it's me so, so far over the edge. Yeah, absolutely. It's You've been good. crying all over I me mean, since day one. <laughs> but what's the point of? You can't hold back, right? right? And like, I think that that's. That is such a valid thing, and, and I know that many people think, oh, you've gone too far, like you shouldn't, and, and I, I don't oh, care. No. It's no. about the yeah. story. Absolutely. And if it happens that way, like, that's just going to happen. But yeah. And, you if, can and if it shuts off one day and it's a different through. color, that would be a different thing, too. Okay. And I love that that, yeah. that kind of, that we have that um, that open space to, to allow to allow that to show, yeah. and that's a very new generation thing to do, I think. I yeah. agree. You know, I wouldn't say it was yeah. allowed before. No, that vulnerability I mean, just, was honored yeah. from yes. day one, yeah. you know, and I'm it's, so grateful for so it great. because, well, I mean, it's it's a, I think it's a requirement of doing this particular piece. I think you do have to show up a little bit brave and mm-hmm. a lot of, a lot of it. I vulnerable. feel, the, I personally feel the tenderness of memory in a way that I never, I never imagined happening because there's a very easy card to play uh, which again we're all I think as we perform in every opera we're playing against an archetype yeah yeah, yeah. absolutely and in yeah. a way we get elevated as a hero to do that and the archetype has to exist so you can fight it and get out of it in a way be free of it but it's more but honest it, if it isn't just the archetype right it's more well, honest if that's it's not what just you're the stock doing. character yeah. well I'm trying to and I think different. that is what I'm it. so inspired by mm, with every single one of you yeah. I mean like I was saying to you on opening night you found depths of vulnerability and like aching within the soul that I have never heard anyone do yeah Including you in the rehearsals, mm-hmm. and yeah. it oh, took me to. Well, I'm serious. Home. But this is what it's been like in the rehearsals. <laughs> We've literally been literally messaging each other at night as well. We haven't had enough. Like I'm in Fairways. Like we just said that we were just like all the greatest thing that's ever happened in the history of the world all day. And then at night, I'm going, Jamie, no. You know, when earlier on when you were in that scene, I've just got to tell you again. Oh my God. And she's going. Do you know what? I got to leave her a longer message than you. So I'm going, so like messaging. We've got a WhatsApp group. To we tell do. each other how much we love each other. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's, it's yeah. just happening. I mean, yeah. but, but that's what happens, I think, when there is a sense of safety. Yeah. 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 When there's a yeah. sense of not only safety, but like the artistry that we're bringing is so supportive because we all understand that a part of it is going to be the fear of the tears coming up, of breaking down, of yeah. having a moment where it hits too deep and you, you just feel it and you don't have a choice but to stop and go okay you know in the rehearsals but you know it's I I think that's the magic of this piece in so many ways being a part of it is that you do have an opportunity to be an honest human who is not an archetype yeah Mm -hmm. Yeah. and that is you have all made such complex characters with flaws and strengths and subtleties and nuances and there's I, I love learning about these people as you shape them and to just add to what you were saying about the opera com- like demands this sort of vulnerability, it's also sort of the story of the opera, is to not squash fear, not to be afraid of fear, but to live with fear mm-hmm. and to be able to be honest through it. It's like an invocation to this courageous vulnerability that I think you're all showing so beautifully. Mm-hmm. And the fact that you can live it while also performing the story, it's what brings the honesty to it. And I think by the end of it, what's incredible to me is to sort of see what what you have done and given us the space to do as everyone is 
going, almost everyone, uh, is going to the guillotine at the end. Spoiler, sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry about that. Okay. Uh, but as, as everyone is going, we see different aspects and different emotions. And it is almost like, to me, I, I thought the other night, this is like watching the stages of grief mm -hmm. and finding your way to the end of it and acceptance and how beautiful it is. Mm -hmm. And seeing the beauty at the end of the opera between you two. Mm -hmm. And the innocence and heart. Oh. I'm getting all goose bumpity. Yeah. Um, but yeah. it is I know. really this face. This it, no, I mean, I but no, the, the two of you. It is. Yeah. It yeah. is the crux of this: the love, the sisterhood, the family, mm -hmm. and the understanding that these these women believe they will be together again, and not just on a WhatsApp group, which yeah. is good. <laughs> yeah. I, I want to ask about um, this. Obviously, it's, it's a true story these women lived, which is astounding. Um, but it's not just a historical story. This is, we say history repeats itself, mm -hmm. but talking about this particular piece, this is not just a story that happened. I feel as though this is incredibly topical to an audience now. We're talking about the French Revolution. We're talking about the loss of liberties. We're, ta we're talking about women's rights being taken away. We see this all over the world. How do you think that this can be topical for an audience in 2023? I think it, it's obvious. You know, I mean, we even just on the news, you know, on TikTok, on all that we see, we're watching the women in Iran. Mm -hmm who are fighting their loss of liberty, their, lo their loss to be able to choose their own clothes, which is literally one of the scenes <laughs> in yeah. this opera. Right. You know, I, I personally, you know, we just had MLK Day. You know, I, I think of the conviction that took him to the bravery that moved our world forward. You know, there, there are so many ways in which I connect with this uh, personally um, in a modern kind of sense. Um, and I don't think I'm alone in that. It's about know. death as well. Yeah. This is an opera about death, about the most frightening <laughs> giving up of, of one's ideas about whether, how, well, it's the most frightening thing that you can confront. But it's also about, I mean, this is about everything. Mm -hmm. This is about what are you prepared to do for the things that you believe in and the people that you love and the ideas the ideas and the philosophy or the your own personal beliefs what are you what are you prepared to do for it and are you prepared to give up everything for the world or for the world to go in the right direction or for the people that you love um, to to have their spirit sort of reach the final conclusion in the way that is authentic to them what is just absolutely the story and it amazes me that actually we're doing a piece that was written by a man in the middle of last century and he gave us this gift of us women in a room discussing these these issues and just talking about them on a stage in front of everyone a whole opera about death yeah. Yeah. and it's the most full of life show that i've ever been a part of mm. yeah. yeah yeah absolutely it couldn't be more relevant mm -hmm. absolutely any of you have any other thoughts about this I just love following that that story and how the substitution so that like you know Constance reveals maybe maybe as we die we're not just dying our death but that it it's taking the death of another to make theirs more comfortable or you know just that idea that's the line that has it's stuck with me the just, most from the entire piece yeah mm -hmm. in it, fact it, I was telling someone about it this morning and I said you know this I don't know why that is the line that really got to me it, to me, it, it shows such communion with another human being. Mm -hmm. And thinking about it that way is really remarkable. I'm glad you brought that line up. It's a great line. Oh yeah. Gosh. And I think, I don't, because my character is the made up one, which I don't exist historically. So I think, I mean, you're actually the real survivor. And I really think that I have to tell myself it's because of your goodness that I saw at the very end that brings me back to, mm. to, to really believe again to yeah. to believe again that, that it's that it's my my way to go and and it's not just mine it's for you or for yeah. another I think it's beautiful and I think very much your your fear the beauty and the honesty of Blanche's fear 
within the storyline is what finally sinks into Mère Marie, where she finds her humanity, her empathy for others. I think she spends so much of it trying to be strong, strong. Mm -hmm. um, that she deflects her own feelings. And so, yeah, it's, it's, it all goes it's balanced in somehow. tandem. Yeah. Somehow it's balanced. <laughs> So, I mean, I know that we're all oldsters here, and so we've all been on the stage before, but this is a long overdue debut for you, and it's an honor for all of us to get to be here for it. What does it feel like for you to finally be here, and especially doing this piece? Yes, so, uh, first of all, uh, coming to New York is a big thing for me, as I come from France, but uh, carrying this piece uh, in my language is an honor. So coming with this piece in New York is very exciting. And then entering this building of the Met is like, okay, mm. this is happening. <laughs> 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 Having the ID of the Met is like, okay, this is also happening. <laughs> but then I enter in the room with Sarah, with, with all of you girls, and I'm like uh, feeling home actually. Uh, with the chorus, with all those ladies, uh, we were talking about sisterhood, so it was really a privilege and I was quite cozy and quite comfy with you all so yeah very happy and uh, relieved that it's done the premiere <laughs> is done so I can, I can relax now well it is a great honor to be able to do this with all of you and uh, it's a piece that I have done a lot as I said but this particular production this group of brilliant artists will stick with me for a very long time same thank you yeah, 100%. <laughs>